Trading activity was definitely up, much, much higher than it's been in the fourth quarter. We, our trading volume was about uh, three times that of uh, last quarter's, previous quarter's volume. And account openings were roughly uh, four times as high as uh, in the fourth quarter. So being a, a, a stay-at-home stock, uh, we certainly benefited from these unfortunate circumstances. I feel that uh, markets have, have functioned over the course of the last few months, Thomas. Uh, how bad did it get uh, in the middle of March, and, and how much have various government and central bank programs helped uh, functioning since then? So, you know, uh, volatility is always proportional to the amount of uncertainty that investors perceive. And obviously, there is a great deal of uncertainty, and that triggered a huge rises in volatility. I think markets functioned relatively well. Liquidity was not as good as it could have been. But, uh, you know, that happens at, at, at times when uh, volatility uh, is very high. So I think that all in all, uh, the market extremely well and we can be proud of the way they they run let's talk about your retail clients that were long energy whether they they own futures or ETFs how, how much pain is there out there given these extraordinary moves we've seen in the price of oil so unfortunately as we announced uh, just about uh, half an hour ago last night uh, Several of our retail clients have suffered very large losses because they were long certain cash settled futures uh, that whose price is derived from the deliverable uh, WTI future. And uh, uh, so suddenly negative prices, prices going to minus 37 uh, within a very few minutes. Uh, uh, they were unable to do anything about that, and uh, the um, settlement price turned out to be negative $37 a barrel. So this is <laughs> this is a very new experience for us and our customers, and it's very unfortunate. And uh, we'll just have to Tom cope with it somehow. Tom Thomas, I'm looking through your statement uh, that addresses that in particular. Uh, and I believe uh, w what it's saying is that uh, some customers uh, were taken into negative territory for their accounts, which is which is not typical, of course, uh, for retail clients who, who don't often have margin positions or, or lending. So who's on the hook for that? If if these contracts, so, so which they didn't fully understand, put them it, into it negative, do, do you have to cough up the losses? Absolutely. So being a broker is not always very good because, you know, when something good happens, is the customer gets the benefit. If something bad happens, it's usually the broker who, who has to cough up the money. And, and so who do you think, when you, when you look across the industry, do, do you think there's going to be some really serious pain from this uh, to be felt by some? Have you been speaking with some of your peers or do you hear stories from some of your peers that brokers are going to take some huge losses from this? Well, we, we carried about 15 percent of the open interest in these contracts. So uh, our customers have lost about $88 million. So there is another half a billion dollars to uh, or losses that uh, somebody is sitting on or other folks are sitting on. And of course, there are offsetting $600 million of gains. And uh, I do not know who those folks are. Do you think that there is a, a misunderstanding about what folks are buying when they buy into these oil ETFs or even futures contracts? I mean, do, do you think something uh, needs I, to change as far as the communication I, or even the, the structure around it so that retail investors don't have to get slammed all, first, when something like this happens? First, First of all, our invest, our customers are financially tend to be financially sophisticated folks. So there are very few retail investors that trade commodity futures, and uh, especially few investors that trade it in in, in large amounts. Uh, 
uh, I think I I think that negative prices are something very, very new to the entire industry, and we just have to learn how to how to cope with them. I, I mean, there are a number of instruments out there today that contain oil futures. So luckily enough, the, the oil futures bounced back uh, this morning, and now they are in positive territory. But if they were going to go to negative again, uh, it would cause a lot of pain for many, many players.